The following program is intended for mature audiences. Hey, what's happening? This is Knife. How's everybody doing tonight? Hey. Hello, this is Eddie. I want to welcome everybody to this week's episode of Untold Archives and Cryptid Confessions with Knife Bluskin. Hey, Eddie, give me the goddamn mic, please. Hey. Hey, this is Knife. Ed, that's Eddie from down into the editing department. I had promised him he could announce the show tonight. I didn't think he took me seriously. Thanks, Knife. I gotta get back to work. Hey, Eddie, thanks. Thanks, buddy. Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Knife. Hope everybody's having a good evening. Tonight, we've got not one, but two stories that uh, both took place down in my neck of the woods, Southern California. And uh, believe it or not, they're not up in the mountains. They're out in the desert, so Southern California. And I just recently learned that Bigfoot don't only reside up in the foothills and mountains. It appears they live in the damn desert, too. Who knew? So, uh, first story here we got was written by a gentleman named Ken Holsey. Um, entitled, The Borrego Sandman. It's from uh, actually from 1939 to present, it appears here. So, it encompasses of uh, several years here on this particular story. Anyway. Many of you are undoubtedly familiar with the legends of Bigfoot and all of his eight black kin, who were reported to dwell in the numerous remote wilderness areas and swamps throughout North America. These vast areas where man seldom treads provides a perfect refuge for these creatures where food and water are plentiful and protection from the elements can easily be attained. It may come to your surprise that the legendary monster is also a desert dweller as well. As hard as it may be to fathom, there are many reports from the desert of Southern California of Sasquatch-like creatures roaming the sand much like they do in the lush forest. These very dry areas with little vegetation and almost no water supply would seem like the last place that a six to ten foot tall animal that weighs upward of 500 pounds, and not to mention is covered with thick fur, would want to call home. Yet the sheer number of Bigfoot sightings in these areas are too numerous to ignore. In the late 60s, reports of Bigfoot sightings in the desert towns of Lancaster and Palmdale reached a feverish pace that lasted well into the 70s, then tapered off. Though these areas border on the Mojave Desert, they also border on the Angeles National Forest, so it wouldn't seem too unlikely that the creature could have been lured out of the wilderness and into the desert for some unknown reason. More bizarre are the stories that have surfaced from nearby Edwards Air Force Base that is farther inland and farther from the forested areas near Los Angeles. Of frequent intrusions by creatures that match the description of Bigfoot. As the story goes, Base Security is in possession of several surveillance videotapes that plainly show giant upright apes trespassing in the numerous underground tunnels under the facility. How or where the Bigfoot break into or gain access to these tunnels has never been revealed, obviously for security reasons, but reportedly these incidents happen rather often and are a nuisance. The Mojave Desert and Death Valley are two of Southern California's more famous barren areas, but there is also a stretch of inhospitable desert that stretches from the Mexican border northward to the edges of the San Bernardino Mountains. This area, too, has had its share of Sasquatch sightings over the decades, and this is the area I wanted to focus on today. The desert wilderness of the Anza Borrego area has been home to many a tall tale and several strange events over the past several hundred years. Many a desert rat has emerged from the region with tales of mysterious Spanish ships filled with pearls and in inexplicably marooned on the sand, or of a Viking boat embedded in the rock. Strange lights in the night skies, and most commonly, of vast quantities of gold just waiting for some lucky prospector to cart out. It was undoubtedly the lure of these reported gold deposits that first lured the white man into these desolate areas, and it is from one of these fortune hunters that the first report of Bigfoot, or the Borrego Sandman, as it is known in these parts, came. Reportedly in 1939, a prospector who, when interviewed in the 1970s, wished to remain anonymous. He was attacked by a large group of upright walking apes as he camped near the Borrego Sink. The frightened man described the creatures as very large, covered in white fur with glowing red eyes. The only thing that saved the man from the attack was the fact that the monsters were afraid of his campfire. Another report of giant footprints from that same general area came from a man named Victor Stoyanow in 1964. His story was retold in a famous article in Saga magazine entitled America's Terrifying Woodland Monster Men back in 1969. The piece also featured the story of Harold Lancaster, a miner who encountered the Sandman in 1968. And here is his excerpt. 
Gold prospectors and treasure hunters frequently seek their lost bonanzas in isolated areas. Since 1964, treasure hunters in the Borrego Valley Desert in California have whispered about the abominable Sandman of Borrego. The arid area is near the Mexican border. It is virtually uninhabited. There are many fissures, caves, and crevices in the Superstition Mountain region, and prospectors say the Cocopa Indians have told of a subterranean labyrinth under the mountain Maj. Victor Stoyanow was seeking an access into the Superstition Hills in 1964 when he noticed large humanoid tracks in the sand dunes. The prints ran in pairs, generally parallel, and averaged at about 14 inches in length and 9 inches wide at the instep. Major Stoyanow declared, He returned to the desert and several other occasions made plaster casts of the prints and snapped photographs. Curious as I am, I hope that the person who discovers what kind of beast it it is, doesn't happen to be me, Major Stoyano said after his thorough investigation into the tracks. The San Diego Union ran an unverifiable article some years ago of a Sandman that was shot by hunter Frank Cox at Dead Man's Hole near Warner, California in San Diego County. The beast was described as a cross between a man and a bear. The head was rather small with protruding teeth and powerful jaws. The muscular creature had feet that measured 24 inches in length and the body weighed what was estimated to be in excess of 400 pounds. Harold Lancaster, treasure hunter, was prospecting in the Borrego Sink east of the settlement of Borrego Springs. California, in July of 1968, when he saw a sand man, I was camped up on a mesa one morning when I saw a man walking in the desert, he reported. The figure came closer. I thought it was another prospector. Then I picked up my binoculars and saw the strangest sight in my life. It was a real giant ape man, Lancaster said. I had heard about the screaming giant ape man up in Tuolumne County that frightened people for a couple of years. Another person and I even went up there to look for the thing. I decided it was a hoax and never expected to actually see one. As the Sandman drew closer, Lancaster became worried. That thing was big. I was no match for it at all, he reported. I had a 22 pistol on my hip, but uh, it would have been like shooting at a gorilla with a pea shooter. I was afraid the beast might get too close, so I fired a couple of rounds off into the air. That Sandman jumped a good three feet off the ground when the sounds of the shots reached him. He turned his head, looked toward me, and then off, running in the other direction. Why didn't Lancaster shoot the alleged Sandman? I was afraid, he admitted. Oh, I was afraid, he admitted. Sorry. They should be protected. They're a form of human, a primitive species. It would be murder to kill one. They should be studied. Reports from the area continue to this day. In 1998, some hikers discovered a large set of footprints near Boundary Peak, close to the Mexican border. Likewise, in 93, a hiker saw a Bigfoot um, using the restroom on the La Jolla Indian Reservation. Reports have also surfaced from military personnel at Camp Pendleton, who had encountered with the creature while on maneuvers during the 60s and the 80s. All right, not too far from the Anza Borrego story of the Borrego Sandman lies an area called Warner Hot Springs. The next story hails from that region. Mysterious ethnic monsters are all the rage today. Best known is the Abominable Snowman of Tibet. Then there's the Yowie of Australia, Bigfoot of the Northeast, Nessie of Loch Ness, Scotland, and the Wild Man of Hubei in China. Yet San Diego County wasn't left behind the door when the monsters were passed out. Not only was the trophy hunter of Dead Man's Hole just about as nasty as they come, it was reported long before the monster come to lately mention above. Dead Man's Hole is located near Oak Grove, a former stage stop of the Butterfield Line. It's located about 10 miles northeast of Warner Hot Springs. The story of the horrid events leading up to the discovery of the monster was told many years ago by James Jasper, editor and owner of the Julian Sentinel. When the Butterfield stage line was first established, it ran by the ran by then nameless dead man's hole. Then it was filled up with clear sparkling water back in those days. It was often a stop for a, uh, to refresh men and their horses before resuming back onto the road. Behind the hole a canyon sliced back into the steep hills growing darker and darker and narrower as it winded back into the still wild and roadless escapement frowning over a pleasant valley below. 
As it gets deep into the mountains, the canyon walls are so steep and its trees so thick and somber that sunlight only penetrates to the bottom for about an hour or so at noon. One bright morning in the spring of 1958, I'm sorry, 1858, the northbound stage stopped at the hole and the driver got out for a drink. As he leaned over the pool, he saw to his horror the partly decomposed face of a dead man bobbing gently in the water. This was the first known victim of Dead Man's Hole. As time went by, news was received in San Diego that several men, both Indian and white, had disappeared without a trace. But since people were always running away from their families or going off to seek gold, not much notice was paid to these reports. But back in 1870, an unnamed French sheep herder was found dead at that hole by a squaw. In 1876, a passenger lighting from the stage for a drink said he had been seen naked. A big, he'd seen a big naked thing covered with long black hair staring at him from the nearby bushes. When this creature saw he was discovered, he vanished down the canyon. A few years later, a man named William Blair was found strangled in the dark woods near the hole. He had influential and wealthy friends up in San Francisco, and they came down to the area, determined to find his murderer. No clues were found. Later that year, the strangled body of an Indian girl was also found not 200 feet from where Blair's body had been discovered. In March of 1888, two hunters, Edward Dean and Charles Cox of Julian, determined to explore the dark and mysterious canyon behind Dead Man's Hole, after a hard struggle, they managed to get about a mile up the canyon through tangle of fallen logs, boulders, and underbrush. As they paused for a breath, they heard a crashing nearby. Cox climbed up the rocky side of the canyon to see what was making the noise. He almost fell off in astonishment. An immense, unwieldy animal resembling a bear from the back was taking rapid strides through the narrow defile away from the hunters. Cox said its legs were long and the creature looked something like a gorilla. Its hair was dark brown and the beast was more than six feet high. Cox climbed down and whispered the news to Dean. Both began to follow the thing. Cox, to, to arrest its progress, fired a shot in the air. At the report, the beast turned its face toward its pursuers. The face was human. Then the creature started climbing the canyon wall toward a cave opening. Cox fired, and with a terrible cry, the monster fell to the canyon floor, dead. Cautiously approaching the body, the men later reported the face was that of a Native American Indian. But the teeth were like a bear's fangs with pointed ends. The creature's feet were huge and covered with black hair. Fearing they would meet the monster's mate, they climbed gingerly up to the cave mouth, then entered. It was empty, but in one corner they witnessed a total of eight human skulls grinning from a rock ledge. They were displayed just like trophies. There was also a half-consumed sheep carcass laying on the floor, and in a corner was a pile of leaves and weeds that appeared to be the creature's bed. In a report given in a San Diego paper of the 1888 era, Jasper said the monster's body had been placed in a wagon and taken to San Diego, where it was to have gone on exhibition the next day. But examination of later papers said nothing of the monster. Local historians pondered the question and there was no answer, since Editor, Editor Jasper and his contemporaries were long dead.